Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you how to DIY a board and batten wall. Board and batten can be very beautiful and functional, especially in your entryway or mudroom area. Just by adding some hooks and maybe a bench with some baskets, you can create a little storage space. So even though our walls are smooth because we skin coated them, we still decided to use this hardboard panel behind it so that everything could have a uniform wood-like finish and it will be more resistant to scuffs and marks on the wall. In the description below, you will find a link to my blog post which goes into further detail as well as links to all of the tools and lumber pieces that we use for this project. If you have to use more than one paneling like we did, make sure to have the ends meet right where the batten will be placed that way it can cover the seams. As you can see, we glued and nailed these panels onto the wall. Obviously, you have to work with your own wall measurements, but just so you get a sense of scale, this wall is seven feet wide and our ceilings are 10 feet tall. Now, when deciding how high you want the board and batten to be, I would suggest that you do it about two thirds of the height of your wall. So our board and batten is about six feet tall and we also took into account the moldings on the front door. We wanted it to be flush with the second molding that you see there. Now we are just marking where the trim pieces are going to go, but we still did use a level once the pieces were on to make sure that everything was nice and straight. We glued and nailed the board, part of the board and battens first, which is the horizontal pieces. Notice this bottom board is going to be slightly off of the floor, about an inch. This is so that once we put the baseboard over it, enough of it will still show. Now it's time to put the battens in, which are the vertical trims. Then we glued and nailed a 1x3 board laying flat on top of the top board. Then we place a very simple 3 quarter inch molding underneath. Then we use wood filler to cover up all the nail holes and also the areas where the trim pieces meet. Finally, we sanded it smooth with 60 grit sandpaper using the sanding stone. Even light sanding will make quite a bit of a mess, so I suggest that you turn off the AC while you do this and try to suck up as much dust as you can with a vacuum right underneath. Also, having a floor fan by a door or a window facing out will help to suck that dust out. Now typically you caulk after you paint, but for this project we decided to go ahead and do it before painting. Mm -hmm. 
We will be spray painting, so prepping is crucial. We covered up the door with plastic and the walls with this craft paper. I really couldn't recommend spray painting enough. It's just the perfect way to get a beautiful smooth finish on your board and banner wall. And as you can see with a little bit of paint that we poured in, we do not have to put that much water to water it down just enough so that the spray gun can spread it out nice and smooth. This is about the consistency that you want right here. We gave our board and batten wall two coats of primer before painting it with the white color that we picked. After priming, we did sand a little bit with this 220 sanding sponge that I have linked below and after that we did clean up with a tack cloth. We did the same thing again after the first coat of paint. I highly recommend the paint that we used. It's called Cabinet Coat and it leaves a wonderful finish on your paneled walls. And here's what it looks like after it's all painted. We will be placing the same baseboards that we had back in here just temporarily because we will be ripping out this floor soon and putting in all wood flooring throughout the house. And there you guys have it, our DIY board and batten wall. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned because we did another accent wall in our dining room which I am super excited to share with you guys.